Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. Check this out, Halo Reach is now booting and in a what I would call semi-playable state on Xenia, this Xbox 360 emulator. So you can see that we are currently in the menus and while fonts are not being rendered as of this point in time, I am able to navigate around by either looking at pictures of how the menus look on the Xbox 360 or by just randomly selecting into them. So this is the Forge menu and I'm going to load into one of these maps. Let's just select Reflection for now and we're just going to have to wait for this map screen and actual level to load before we can load into it. So you can see it loading in the top of my screen and once it loads I'm just going to click here and we are going to be able to load in and see exactly what rendered graphics are like at this point in time. And there we go, we are now loaded into reflection in Forge Map Editor on Halo Reach on this Xbox 360 emulator. In a very similar circumstance to Halo 3, another game I showed booting and rendering graphics in this emulator, we do not have currently rendered tracers or explosions for grenades. So in this level there are actually some fairly odd vertex issues and it are they are actually caused by just the DMR weapon itself. So I'm gonna just, yeah okay, so you can actually follow the vertex explosion and find where this weapon is on the map. And here it is. This is the DMR weapon model and if I just exit the editor mode and come back into gameplay, picking it up you will see that this weapon is basically what causes all of the vertex explosion on this map. So yeah, it's really weird. It's just a really weird bug to see that it's just one singular weapon. Now I'm pretty sure that there's a second one of these on this map as well, so I'm going to come back into the level editor and where is it? Is it on this side of the map or is it on the other side of the map? We're just gonna have to try and find the vertex explosions and see exactly where it is on the map. And there it is, we'll just follow the vertex explosions and there is our other DMR on this map. So what you can kind of do to fix this vertex explosion is I'm gonna come back into gameplay and I'm going to re-equip my other DMR because you can't actually pick up the same weapon twice. So what I need to do is just empty the clip. Thank you to Zekin over on the Xenia Discord for suggesting this to me because I just kind of wanted to show what it's like. And okay, so can we pick it up now? Ah, uh, there we go. So we've now picked up both of these weapons and we're not going to see any more vertex explosion. Now, unfortunately, there is a timer on the respawn of weapons, even in forge mode for some reason, which I kind of find odd. I don't remember that happening on the on the Halo Reach, but if it does, or if it did happen before, let me know down in the comments. But um, yeah, it's going to respawn in a few minutes, and I'm going to get vertex explosion, so as soon as we see more vertex explosion across the map, uh, yeah, we're going to... Yeah, okay, you can see it's happening already again. So it has respawned the first spot we picked the weapon up. The uh, DMR has respawned once again. So let's just try to jump up again and actually confirm that it is the DMR that's causing all of this vertex explosion. So it's just really cool to see um, Halo Reach booting on a PC in an emulator. It's like a game that... Uh, for some reason, along with many of the other Halos, has never made its way to the PC platform. Probably due to the fact that Microsoft still most likely thinks that PC gamers don't want the games. But anyway, yeah. Uh, in regards to the campaign in this game, or the story mode, or whatever you want to call it, it does indeed boot, but there are some very, very severe graphical issues, similar to what we were seeing on the DMR in the reflection level. So you can see that this is the intro video, and we are most likely going to see some weird rendering issues in it very soon. There you go, you can see that there's some weird, very weird, in fact, rendering issues, and it's basically only going to get worse. As you can see, it kind of, this kind of stuff happens all the time, and it's like texture corruption, I'm not exactly sure exactly what's causing it, but there are still some fairly severe rendering issues, especially so with 3D models when it actually gets into gameplay. So yeah, you can see that while some of the models are rendered correctly, uh, quite a few of them are not and we get this horrible vertex explosion and completely misrepresentation of what the graphics should look like. But it is still pretty awesome to see 
that performance in both the reflection level and the majority of the other levels in both forge mode and if you enter into custom games are rendered very very well and performance wise it runs at anywhere between around 15 and 30 frames per second at any given point in time. So this emulator though I have probably criticized it a bit too much in the past has actually made some fairly awesome progress in the last few weeks over the last month especially since we have seen these DirectX 12 based builds. So once again guys if you want me to cover more games on this emulator, let me know what games you want me to cover down in the comments section of this video, and if I can do so, I will cover them. As always, cheers for checking out the video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.